announce our agent intel this this week is removing your first call fears um, again as a reminder for anybody who's tuned in for the very first time on this what we've decided to do is implement a new segment called agent intel um, and what is its tools that you can take right back to your desk and immediately immediately implement into your sales system right um, so i would like to welcome mr paul pimentel partner leader here at hst all around great guy fearless that's for sure um, but yes, do I, need, do I need this? Thank you. Yes, you do. Oh, yeah, welcome. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, just wanted to get started with uh, a little background on myself. Um, been in sales since I was 19 years old. Started out as uh, door to door, uh, selling steaks door to door. So, me knocking on your door and asking you if uh, I can interest you in a steak. Uh, was a little uh, was a little rough, but uh, I've been in different types of sales areas, from door to door to uh, business to business. And um, the hardest one for me was always the phone, because I was never ever um, good on the phone. So when I got into the mortgage industry, it uh, required me to be on the phone because back then it wasn't the refi boom. I was selling interest rates at twelve percent and um, which was normal back then, and everyone's freaking out right now about the interest rates going up, but don't worry about that. Um, and it freaked me out because I never ever picked up the phone to call somebody out of the blue, and back then it was actually cold calling because we didn't know um, if they're going to be interested in a mortgage. And I, you know, it's not like uh, it's not like um, the product that we sell now. Actually, I don't call it selling; I, I call it just you know presenting. Okay, presenting something somebody wants. So the mindset is very important in this. Okay, so I think I have to click this right. The mindset, okay? Everyone tells you be confident. It's easy to tell someone to be confident, but where do you get your confidence, okay? <laughs> You're gonna build yourself up and say, okay, everybody else is doing it, right? And being successful at this, so why can't I do this? So you get on that phone, and the first thing you think of is your, your phone's ringing, and you got your eyes closed, and you're saying, please don't answer, please don't answer, please don't answer, right? A lot of you can <laughs> probably relate to this, okay? Because you wanna leave that message instead of as opposed to speaking to somebody okay so then the machine picks up and you get full of the ums and the ums is hi my name is paul pimentel and um i'm calling from healthcare solutions and um and everything is just um 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 okay so you're not ready you're still not ready okay you still don't have that mindset to be confident so then what do you have to do one thing i like to point out is oh sorry be confident is use your your leader, and I say this literally. Um, be use them as a po as um you as you're calling as a third party. This works well for my new agents. Hi, my name is Paul. I'm calling on I'm calling with Healthcare Solutions. I'm calling on behalf of our broker Dan Mack. Okay, it's easier to start talking that way because you're not calling for yourself anymore, and you're more lax. Okay, you don't have that fear of. What if I can't answer their question? Okay, you know, things like that. Now you can just present yourself as you're calling for somebody else, and every question that they ask you, you just simply write down that says, Mr. Mack will get back to you when we, you know, at, at our scheduled appointment and answer all those questions for you. Now it's a lot easier for you to get all the gathering. Okay, so still what's missing though is the practice, okay, your conversation, when you leave that message, okay, you have to practice in order to be able to uh, leave that perfect message, okay, you don't want to be full of the ums, and how you practice is record yourself, I mean, continuously record yourself, it's not, you know, just pick up, just sit, you're sitting at home in the evening, not doing anything, just record yourself as you would be leaving the message, okay, and if, and then what happens actually when you call somebody, and they pick up the phone, okay, be ready for that, be ready to say, you know, I'm calling on behalf of Healthcare Solutions and on behalf of my broker, okay? It's okay to say that you're not the actual person that's going to be helping them, even though you are, okay? Because you're going to gather that information a lot simpler, a lot easier for you to kind of, you know, move on to the next step, which is actually getting on quote, okay? So that is kind of what we do. There's not a lot of science to this, okay? But it's one of the methods that I like to use with my agents because a lot of times they're just scared to make that call, you know, it's nerve wracking. So if you use your leader, okay, use them as a crutch to gather that information, it's gonna be a lot easier for you than when you've done it 10, 15, 20 times, 
that you start using your own name and you're off and running. That's all I got. Any questions? Yes, Mr. King. How important is having a script early on? It's imp it's important. That's what I mean. That's where the practice comes in. You know, you don't want to be full of the ums. Like I said, you know, you still have to practice it because even if you have a script, you get nervous, and you're gonna get nervous, and it's okay. You know, we all we've all been through it. So, but you get um, you have to practice. You have to have that script and practice, and you have to have the right gathering sheet. Make sure you get all those questions answered, right. so you can actually propose the right quote for them, and the right plan. Yes, Bob. So you're recommending for your new agents that they go and gather on that first call if possible, or are they just <coughs> setting an appointment for you? Nope. They get, well, they can't schedule an appointment unless they gather, right? Because what's the purpose of scheduling an appointment that, at that point? So if they're getting somebody on the phone, they're going to gather the information, but they're using – it's for them. It's for their sale, but they're using myself, let's say, as a crutch, so the conversation flows a lot easier. They don't get stuck with, with questions that they can't answer. They can just write down the questions, and we can answer it for them when we call them back. Do you have your own scripts that you use specifically, or do you um, recommend people to create? Them? I had my own script, guys, but what I want to tell you is that we've changed uh, a little bit of our concept. We kind of follow the uh, the Michael and Sarah Lepp concept now of uh, of leaving messages. Um, it used to be, you know, call us back. You know, here's our number. Call us back. Okay, and then we we've changed that mindset of how many people do, are, are the, how many of these people are really going to actually call us back. So now what we do is continue to tell them that we're going to be calling them back at a specific time. And hopefully that they're going to be available. Okay, it's changing as opposed to them calling us. We're actually telling them that we're going to call you. Okay, and hopefully we can get a hold of you at that time. You saw a big difference or a huge, change? huge difference. Yeah, so that's the way we go now. So the script has changed. I can definitely put one up. You know, without a problem. You know. Are you perceiving yes, difference? Quantify that. Huge difference as opposed to. Um, they're used to hearing you, and then when you, you know, it's 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 a lot. For, for example, Marty, if I'm telling you I'm going to be, I want you to call me back, you're going to get busy, you're going to get busy, you're going to get busy, you're not going to call me back, okay? If I continue to tell you that I'm going to be calling you back, and I'm going to be calling you back, and your phone rings, and you see a number that's, you're, you're saying, oh, it's this guy, he said he was going to call me back, you're probably going to pick up that call, because you probably want to talk to me after so many times of hearing my voice, as opposed to you calling me back, so I can either... I can stop calling you, or you can actually we can actually do business. So, sure. Do you, should they be okay? So I, I know that the, the point was the fear of, of making those first mm -hmm. calls. Um, should they uh, automatically just be preset, knowing that they're it's not going to happen that first time? That first oh, for sure, uh, for sure. I mean, it's it, it's very rare that you're going to make that phone call and, and they're going to answer on the first on the first attempt. But it happens. I mean, it happens depending on where your, you know, where your leads are coming from. It, it's definitely going to happen. But yeah, you should be prepared for both. Good. You know? Okay. Yeah, because I think that'll help just remove a lot of the anxiety. Yep. Knowing that, that is the the main thing yeah, is the anxiety. It's practice, right? Mm -hmm. Anything else from anyone? Are you doing the two or three touches right away? Um, we, I, I went from a nine touch system to a twelve touch system. I'm saying on the first call, like you call. Email, text. yeah, call, email, text, and the first call, and then the second call is going to be, you know, whenever I get a chance to that afternoon. Then you yes, call them right back if they don't answer. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. The, the, the other little tricks are the double calls, of course. I mean, that's you know, that's one of those things is you know you call them up and nobody answers the phone, you call right back because it could be an emergency. They don't know who could be calling, and then they pick up. I mean, those are things you learn in training from cribs. So, uh, the so. twelve touch. How do you spread that out? Or? Um, it's up to you. It's up to you. There's no science to it. It's up to you how how you how you schedule yourself during the day. You know, I'm still on a basically on a part time basis when I work. So when I hit it, I hit it that one particular day pretty hard. You know, usually Monday and Wednesday are my big big days. So, but other than that, you know, you gotta you gotta spread it out according to your 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 schedule. Well, it has to be one of the most successful part time workers I've ever known. Amazing what he does. It's accomplished with that. See, when you do it for such a long time, you can do it part time, right? Yes. Yeah. That's yes. the goal. That's the goal. That's it. Four years in the company, guys, and it's been fantastic, and I, I would never change a thing. 17 years in the real estate and mortgage, and this is the best thing I've ever done, so I wouldn't change a thing. It's beautiful. You're going to be around for a little bit today. I am. Anybody else who might have I any am. questions? Anything significant or specific that you feel we should share? And we'll make sure we can get it added to the presentation so that um, when that gets posted, people have that as a reference. Back Perfect. To Excellent. Anything else? Good. Okay. Thank you so Thank much, you. Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing.